Today is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We commemorate today's Mass, St. Tiberius and Susanna, and also we have the commemoration of all the saints. The epistle appointed for today's Mass is taken from the epistle, first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 6 through 13. Brethren, let us not covet evil things as they coveted, and neither become ye idolaters as some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and then rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed fornication, and there fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them tempted, and perished by the serpents. Neither do you murmur as some of them murmured, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now although these things happened to them in figure, and they are written for our correction upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, he that thinketh himself to stand, let him take heed, lest he fall. Let no temptation take hold on you, but as such as is human. And God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above which you are able, but will make also a temptation issue that you may be able to bear it. The Gospel appointed for today's Mass, taken the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, verses four through 47. At that time, when Jesus drew near to Jerusalem, and seeing the city, he wept over it, saying, If thou also hadst known, and that in this thy day, the things that are to, for thy, to thy peace, but now they are hidden from thy eyes, for the days shall come upon thee, and they, thy enemy shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and straighten, straighten thee on every side, and beat thee flat to the ground. And thy children who are in thee, they shall not leave in thee a stone upon a stone, because thou hast not known the time of thy visitation. And entering into the temple, he began to cast out them that sold therein. And they that bought, saying to them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made a den, a den of thieves. He was, he was teaching daily in the temple. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Now all these things happen to them in figure, and they are written for our correction, upon whom the ends of the earth are come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. We see in today's gospel, our Lord weeping over Jerusalem. It wasn't just a short time before our Lord's crucifixion that he prophesied that Jerusalem must be destroyed. And so he, in a prophecy, actually go back, if you go back to the last Sunday after Pentecost, the first Sunday of Advent, you'll see the prophecy concerning the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place less than 30 years. Actually, if you want to read a, a good account of it, if you have a uh, liturgical year by uh, Dom Grange, you'll find there on the ninth Sunday after Pentecost in his, in his series of 15 books, you'll find there a condensed version of what took place in Jerusalem. If you want to go to the Jewish historian, whose works were translated into English, Josephus, you'll find there the whole account of the destruction of Jerusalem. But just to summarize it briefly, when just Jerusalem was destroyed, the destruction, the decimation that took place was unimaginable. Josephus records that there were over a million people died uh, in the destruction of Jerusalem, in the siege of Jerusalem. Uh, there, things were reduced to such dire extremes that even mothers were eating children. There's cannibalism. Uh, there's fighting and fighting among themselves within the, within the city walls. And coming out of the city, the, the soldiers were mercenary soldiers of the Romans hired. They were cutting people open, looking for jewelry, just, it was, and they were hanging them. They ran out of wood. They said there were so many people hanging on crosses at that point in time. And all of this happened to them, in fact, but all of this was for our instruction. It was for our instruction. That we might prepare. Our Lord prophesied about the destruction of Jerusalem. And when our Lord is telling about the story here, I believe it was at that point in time, St. Peter says, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They just didn't understand. They just didn't understand what was happening. And we ourselves sometimes become blinded, even as our Lord made reference to that. He says, now, now it's hidden from their sights. And yet we ourselves have had many warnings. Our Lord warned them. He prophesied them what was to take place. And we too have our warnings. If we just go back to Scripture, just to, to review just for a moment. Whenever God was going to make sure he wanted the people to do good, to stay away from evil, or if they're going to be punished because they committed to evil, he would warn them. He would warn them. Take even Adam and Eve. It just wasn't a punishment or saying you must not do this or must not do that. Sometimes he'd say you must do this. Adam and Eve was told they must not eat of the forbidden fruit. 
And you see, they were warned that if they did, here's what would happen. We could go through scripture and find numerous examples. Uh, the Egyptians, uh, they would not take the warning of Moses from God. The Ninevites, likewise, were warned. They heeded the words of Jonah and they did penance. And they, rather than God's wrath what came upon them, his blessing came upon them. We, we could find numerous examples where God warned them. And we even ourselves have these warnings in front of us, but yet we have been warned in many ways, been, been told what is to happen, and we mustn't turn a deaf ear to what, what, is, what is coming to pass. Take, for example, even the time of Noah, or the time of Moses. In the time of Noah, they were warned that what they were doing was, was not, they're not living the right life, they were committing sins, and so the whole world was destroyed. Moses, of course, warned the Egyptians, says, turn my, he told them to do something positive, turn, my, turn the people free, let them no longer slaves, and he wouldn't do it, and a ter terrible chastisement came upon the Egyptians. Now, we too have our warnings. It may be that maybe an illness, maybe old age, maybe a warning from a friend, maybe a, a, courage, a encouraging word from, from someone that we know. Maybe we heard a sermon or read the, the, something in the, one of the Gospels. All the examples we give, maybe some quote-unquote act of nature that, that we find out, we come to realize how fragile life really can be and how close eternity can be, such that even though we be younger, we may have many years ahead of us from all appearances, that might end very shortly, that we might not have time and as the destruction of Jerusalem, as uh, the killing of the Egyptians, uh, the flooding of the world, uh, all the examples we could give, when we have time, that we have time now. Time, if you will, is of the essence. And as St. Paul says, we go back and just read St. Paul, of all the things that happened to them, he says some of them became idolaters, some of them committed fornication, he, he says some of them uh, just they felt all, all the, the, the bad things, is, happened, they were destroyed by the destroyer. Now he says, these things happened to them, literally, that we might learn a lesson from them. He said figuratively, but really it happened, what, the, what happened, happened to them. But let's look upon it as, as, a, as an instruction for ourselves that if we don't learn, the same thing may happen to us. So if we've had something come, and maybe we had something where we wiped our brow off, says, that was a close call or whatever it might have been, and uh, we mustn't look at these things as something pretty academic or hypothetical or a parable, but really as a lesson, as a warning, as an instruction, as a means by which we may come to understand where we stand in the sight of Almighty God. And let's take that knowledge and put it to use. Because when God gives us a warning, uh, it's there that we might learn from it. God does not speak idle. There's no idle chatter in heaven, if you will. When God appeared to Moses or our Lord appeared, all the different examples we can give when God spoke, for example, Mount Tabor, it wasn't just idle chatting. It was there for an instruction, there for a purpose. And the same things, when we, when we have this instruction coming to us, whether it's our Lord speak, looking over, looking, overlooking Jerusalem and there the apostles saw the beauties of Jerusalem, our Lord gave them a subtle warning. He says, you know, okay, okay, you see that now, but here's what can happen. St. Paul says, here's what it is, but here's, his, here's what happened to them. And so let's learn a lesson because we don't know the time nor the day nor the hour. When, when St. Peter asks our Lord, says, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Our Lord says, not for you to know. It's not for you to know the times. Just know this. And, he, he, and then he, he, he prophesied what would happen to Jerusalem. And he says, when you see these signs, he says, know that the time is near. If you go to the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, he'll say, when you see these signs, know that it's near even at the doorstep. When you see the, the young trees bringing forth their leaves, you know that, that the spring is near. All the, the warnings he gave us. And so we mustn't turn a deaf ear. The problem is, the problem is, sometimes if we start falling into sin, one kind or another, sin, first off, darkens the intellect. So when someone first commits a sin, it probably shocks them, surprises them that they fell into the sin, whatever it may have been. But then they do it again. It becomes a little easier. Then the third time, fourth time, pretty soon becomes a norm. It becomes normal. And the, the, the wickedness of it becomes blotted out. And pretty soon the person doesn't even realize the sin. 
doesn't even know us, they don't even acknowledge it being a sin. And really, even as, as uh, uh, we read in the scriptures today, that uh, they become dark and they don't see, as our Lord spoke about, they don't see even what it is they're doing. Let's pray, and let's pray to Almighty God that we don't ever become so hard and so callous, that we don't see where we're at, where we stand in the sight of God, but rather that we could come to understand what it is we need to know to save our soul. So now, scriptures say, now is the acceptable time. Now is the time that we do something about it. We mustn't wait until we're on our deathbed. We mustn't wait until the end of the world. Uh, we mustn't wait until some accident takes us by surprise uh, before the judgment seat. But know this, that each and every one of us, we're going to die at some point in time. Some point in time, we're going to come to that, to that threshold, the, the door which separates us from this life and the next life. And when, when the soul leaves the body, crosses, crosses over that threshold and enters into heaven, uh, we better be well prepared for that moment and that time. So take these words from today's epistle. Take what St. Saint, Saint Paul has to say when he's writing to the Corinthians. And then also analyze and listen to what our Lord is saying when he talks about the destruction of Jerusalem. And look how he wept over Jerusalem. Because he died not just for the city itself, but even for every one of the, those individuals that were in that city. And yet they wouldn't listen. So today, today, take stock. Take stock of what is said, what is done. And as St. Paul says, it was written for our instruction. Therefore, learn from it. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.